Hello, it's Kerry Griffiths, the Divorce Financial Planner. What I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about pensions on divorce. It's one of the areas that I get asked most about as a financial planner and one of the areas I support the women that I work with the most. So I thought um, it would be a good basis for a video to give an overview as a starting point that we can build on. So when your marriage is dissolved or your civil partnership is dissolved, the court tends to consider the pensions in three different ways. So firstly, they might consider um, the value of your pension um, and you might be given a percentage share of that of your former spouse's pension. Excuse me, tripping over my words. So, yeah, you might be given a percentage of your former spouse's pension and that's called pension sharing. Or you might have to give your former spouse a percentage of your pension. Um, and the way that it's calculated is normally done by an actuary and we try to work out the equivalent value so that you can be confident in your retirement income. So the second way that it might be assessed is um, by offsetting. So rather than you receiving or giving a share of your pension to your former spouse, you agree the equivalent value in assets. So it could be that your former spouse's pension is worth X and you agree that other assets are worth Y and that you are comfortable that that is a fair assessment and a fair return. Now, it's really important that you seek professional advice. Um, this is an area where it's really important to not just consider the, the value of a pension fund, but what it could give you in retirement, because they're quite different figures. And it's important to look at the equivalent incomes and what you'd be giving up there. Um, so I don't get involved in actually valuing a pension. We would tend to use a, an actuary as a pension on divorce expert to do that via your solicitor. But what I would do then is help you understand in real life terms what those figures mean and what the alternatives mean. So they're the first two. So we've got pension sharing and we've got offsetting. And then the third one that you might actually do is pension earmarking. It's not as common these days, but what could potentially happen is um, that you get a maintenance payment directly from one person's pension pot to yours. Um, so it's a little bit like a pension attachment. So you just kind of get your little pot within their pension sectioned off. Um, and like I say, it's not as common, but it could be an outcome that happens. So they're the three things to be aware of. Um, but also while we're talking about pensions, it's really important to also be aware of the importance of discussing state pensions when you're getting divorced or um, civil partnership dissolved. So there are some things that should be um, brought to the table, um, particularly where additional pensions are involved, um, so that there can be some clarity around um, national insurance contributions on both parties and whether or not they need to be shared as well. So I hope that's really useful. And yes, I'll build on each of these as we go forward, just giving you the knowledge and the input you might need to understand your current situation. Hope you found that useful. That's Kerry Griffiths, the Divorce Financial Planner. Take care, guys.